Hi, and welcome to session one in our series called Walking Together. You know, we are uh, looking at a, a panel of four um, couples as we talk practically about how we can do our closest relationships in a way that it reflects Christ. It's a highly relational series that we're going to be doing, and I'm so thrilled to be sharing it uh, with you. Uh, let's get right into the Word of God. Cool. Um, it's on Ephesians 4. Verse 25, Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Now, I just want to highlight truth-telling. Um, truth-telling is absolutely, absolutely essential in all relationships. Without truth, there's no trust. Without trust, there's no intimacy. Um, truth-telling, it creates a safe environment and a strong foundation on which all relationships can thrive. Oh, man. Yes, but... Sometimes truth telling uh, causes all kinds of problems because maybe you don't, maybe you can't handle the truth, right? And so one of the things we want to talk about in the first session is how really great couples, they don't just blatantly tell the truth. Mm -hmm. They don't just blurt it out, whatever they feel like and unload everything. They actually pull their punches. A great quote uh, from Shanti Feldman is this, that highly happy couples treat one another with intentional kindness. They joke and they challenge, but they try to never do it in ways that the partner would receive as disrespectful mm. or, or hurtful. And I think that's what is in view, uh, even when um, Ephesians, earlier on in Ephesians 4 verse 15, it says, let's tell the truth, but in love. Yeah, I think the intention and as well as the timing of um, when you tell the truth and, and um, why you tell the truth is absolutely key. Uh, we've got to, we really got to pay attention, you know, um, when we do this. So one of the things is uh, we were talking about like not taking advantage of people's weaknesses, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's right. You know how in marriage, right, it's... A couple often um, get polarized because it's only two of you, right? Um, often we find that perhaps even in your own marriage, um, one person may be more articulate in, arguing, in, in presenting the argument and the other less so. So it's so easy for one party to just, you know, uh, boo those the other person's arguments and then just make the other person feel like they can't even begin to express how they're feeling on the inside. Um, and we just have to be very mindful of our inherent weakness or our inherent strength and the, uh, our spouse's inherent weakness so that when we do uh, bring out the truth in love or do have the fight or the debate, it is done out of love and it is like fair. That's right. So you're not just telling the truth blatantly, mm. but neither are you ignoring the truth. Yeah. So let's hear from some of our families that we've got here, our couples. Uh, how do you balance that tension between truth uh, and love? I think uh, for us, uh, you know, as as we've gotten older, as our relationship has sort of matured, we have probably become a bit more direct, um, you know, with each other. I think in the earlier days, uh, you know, when you're in that sort of trust building phase and you are, uh, you know, learning to live with each other, you know, et cetera. And, and certainly when when you had, you know, kids for the first time, et cetera, um, you, you know, you, you you tend to hold back, you know, a little bit more sometimes. But I think, you know, as as certainly as we've gotten older, and I think this is both a strength and a weakness sometimes. Uh, you know, we've probably gotten a bit more a bit more direct um, with each other. <laughs> um, and I think something that's important is as well that for many and also touched on was um, uh, knowing the right time to bring something up, like. Uh, if uh, uh, for us anyway, if I'll think about you know what John Paul's been going through during the day, or how how I feel like I'm if I'm really tired, then I won't bring something up because I know that I'll be more emotional. Um, so yeah, I think that's important. Hmm. What comes to mind to me immediately is um, the first few times that uh, we we had tough conversations, Maggie and I. Um, Maggie is a conflict avoider, 
And, uh, and so I distinctly remember the first couple of times she would literally try and run away <laughs> when we were having tough conversations and I would have to drag her kicking and screaming into mm -hmm. the conversation, not literally, but, um, <laughs> um, but I, I guess that just goes to highlight that, um, it's, it's actually a really hard habit to, to develop. Um, and so I think. Uh, heading into it, ha having the right expectations when trying to develop that habit of speaking truth in love, um, is that the, the right expectation is that it is hard. Uh, it's it's not easy, and and it takes practice. Um, sometimes years of practice. So that that's something that immediately comes to mind for me. And it always ends in me in tears, and I think <laughs> he's used to that. So. <laughs> um, comes to mind is um, as much as it's timing. But a lot of time, um, that when the truth comes up, it, it still hurts. It doesn't matter how old you are. But Chris and I will always say it's better out than in. It is like an abscess and you need to lance it and let all the junk come out and the past comes out so that you give it a chance to heal. And, um, and I would say like it's like broken bones. Uh, when it gets mended, it's much stronger. And so you're, if you can overcome that and you know that the intent is not malicious and it is just wrong timing or not said in the right way and you overcome that, you actually go to a different level in your relationship. So um, early in our marriage, uh, Roger and I uh, were quite different people. I am a... <laughs> I'm a Conflict. I used to be a, a very much a conflict avoider, so grew up in a household where I never heard my parents fight. And um, but Rod, on the other hand, very much confrontational. So early in our marriage, um, I would just avoid um, conflict, and he would try to force it out. But um, I think over time, what's happened is that I've gotten more uh, comfortable, I guess, with. Uh, conflict and talking about things mm -hmm. and um, Raj has also been careful to time his um, uh, instead of being like a bulldozer he's like uh, you know been a little bit more sensitive to, to my feelings as well so I think um, that's really really been helpful but I think what we also have learned to um, walk through as well is that over time we've changed as a couple as, a, as individuals so to be also uh, sensitive to that and also to not hold the other person to where they were like five years ago. That people have changed and become better and, and you know, and to recognize that as well. <laughs> One of the things that I find out that every couple is, we look at things differently. And I think our definition of truth is actually not complete because everyone sees things in a very mm. different way. And I believe that only God can tell, can see the whole picture. We are only seeing part of the picture. Right. Absolutely. And I think that's, that's so important for us to, to remember. And that's why I think this session when we're, we're looking really at uh, Ephesians 4.25, uh, they all lead into our key verse, which is Ephesians uh, 5, 1, right? We are to be imitating God. Jesus doesn't just tell us the truth and then that's it. We're all, uh, you know, um, sinners and then we're, we're, we're doomed. Yeah. He really, he redeems us, but he doesn't redeem us in a way that he n forgets about the sin in our life. And various. he also has to deal with that truth, the ugliness in us and, uh, and, you know, he chose that generous, gracious way of paying the price uh, for it. Yeah, and I love how um, everyone is sharing from um, where they are at and what their experiences have been. And I just love that it is so multi-generational because you hear from Mike and Maggie who are, you know, studying and, and trying to, to develop the culture of speaking the truth in love. It may be a bit awkward in the beginning, but, you know, it's something that they're working towards and, 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 and you know, chipping at it. And then you hear from Chris and Winnie who've got that culture already um, set up and now they're like sharing from like uh, uh, reaping the, 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 what they've sown perspective. And you know, it just, it, it's so good. It's amazing. Yep, absolutely. Mm. So we hope that you would have a great discussion today. God bless.